Hi everyone, this is Rich from the Rich Maxwell channel. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, the channel is about drones and photography and in particular talk a lot on here about Sony cameras and the E-mount mirrorless camera system. So uh, this video is all about the Tamron 70 to 180 f2.8 di3 vxd lens so this is a new lens on the market i think it just came out in may this year uh, so during the lockdown period and it's a lens that i've been really interested in looking at for a while as i've had this focal range kind of covered by a canon adapted lens so i had a sigma 70 to 200 f2.8 that i was adapting for my sony mirrorless cameras but i always wanted to get a native e-mount lens that would have the snappy fast autofocus and is just designed for this system so really pleased to finally have this lens now as uh, managed to get it on a, a great deal through uh, a website called Teco Buy or Tico Buy and uh, I was a bit dubious about buying through that website as I've uh, read a lot of reviews of people not getting their goods and things like that but luckily mine arrived it took about a week and a half to get here but all arrived as um, as expected brand new 70 to 180 f2.8 e-mount lens so really pleased to finally have this lens so I could do some proper testing on it so onto the unboxing now then so it comes in the usual familiar sort of Tamron lens box so white box with all the details on it and you get uh, in the box the classic little bits and bobs like a manual not really sure why you need a manual for a camera lens as it's all pretty self-explanatory but no doubt there'll be someone out there that actually reads these things uh, personally I don't read the uh, the camera lens manuals I just uh, leave them in the box for when I sell it at some point so yeah so all is there as expected and then there is the lens as you can see it's uh, got the uh, the external sort of zoom so when you ex when you zoom out the uh, barrel does extend making the lens a bit bigger but overall it's still a very nice compact lens so to compare that with my uh, previous lens that I was using the uh, the Sigma Canon lens so that's the the Canon Sigma lens and that's uh, that's the new e-mount one it doesn't look a massive amount different but kind of show you there's quite a bit more weight to this one and when I was using this one I had to also add on an adapter as well so that made it even bigger and bulkier on the camera so uh, this one is a real relief for my camera bag and when I'm hiking for a day and I want to take all my holy trinity of lenses the 17 to 28 the 75 to uh, the 28 to 75 and this uh, 70 to 180 I can get it all in my bag really easily it's not too heavy it's not going to weigh me down too much so that's really nice about it so this um, this lens it has a slightly different autofocus motoring system to the other Tamron lenses. So this is the 28 to 75, and uh, as I say, I've got all of the the free lenses now. But this one and the 17 to 28 have an RXD motor system for their autofocusing, whereas this one has their VXD system. Apparently, the VXD one is their fastest autofocusing system yet. And uh, on a lens like this, it is really important to have a good fast autofocus system because because with the telephoto lenses at f2.8, you've got a very, very shallow depth of field. So to switch between subjects, it um, has got a lot more sort of movement to do to, to focus properly. Whereas on the wider lens, the 17 to 28, the depth of field is much bigger. So there's a bit more room for error in focusing and locking on focus. So it can afford to uh, just um, yeah maybe go a little bit slower in the motors on that. But yeah, certainly with a, a, a telephoto lens like this, you're gonna need a really good autofocus system for it to, to move around quickly and not hunt loads. And I found it so far on my Sony A7R3 to be really snappy, really fast at autofocusing. There's absolutely no delays. You just point it at whatever you want to focus on and it focuses. And it's um, right most of the time. It's uh, working with the eye autofocus on the A7R3. So I took some really nice little shots of my son on a, a swing. Uh, obviously when he's on a swing, he's moving quite Quite quickly so it's a bit of a challenge for any camera's autofocus system and this lens with the Sony a7R 3 pleased to say picks him up nicely so uh, yeah it's been really impressive so far like all of the the Tamron lenses it's really sharp uh, in the center at its uh, its sort of shortest focal length and longest and at f2.8 so that's usually the challenge for any zoom lens if it can do the extremes the uh, 2.8 you know the, the the shortest end and the uh, the longest end uh, really well then you know it's a good lens and um, I have took a lot of test images for this uh, this video review so I'm gonna go through those with you soon but 
onto the autofocus now, just going to show a little bit of a clip of me in the garden, bobbing up and down, jumping side to side, in and out of focus, and we can just see how quickly this snaps into focus in video mode. And so, yeah, so you can see here, there's me in my garden, it's uh, focusing a bit on me and a bit on the fence and going between the two, so quite far apart, but it's doing it really reliably, really well. And uh, yeah, it's certainly picking up focus nicely, looking sharp in the video there. So no doubt if you're vlogging or filming yourself, you can rely on this lens to, to lock onto you nicely. So onto the test images now then. In, uh, in, in my usual sort of review fashion for lenses, I've got the camera set up on a tripod, took some photos of a brick wall at various uh, focal lengths and various apertures so we can review the footage. So I'm going to go onto the computer now and talk through the images. So here we are, we're in Lightroom. So as I said, got some photos here of a brick wall. So it's pretty boring images, so I don't expect you to be too excited about seeing these, but uh, we're just going through them so we can check out the sharpness of the lens and see how it performs throughout its focal length and really scrutinize its sharpness. So start off at the center, f2.8, 70 millimeters. So this is its shortest focal length. And as you can see, zooming in one to one on these 42 megapixel files from the Sony a7R 3 we've got a pretty sharp image there. It's, um, I'd say it could be sharper, but it looks pretty good. And then at the corners, it looks pretty similar. Again, nice and sharp. So pleasing to see that. And then next up to F4, where you'd expect it to sharpen up a bit, and it looks a bit sharper again. Uh, still not. I'd say it's full sharpness. That corner looks very nice and sharp. That one looks good. So corner sharpness. Sense sharpness all looks pretty good. I would say actually for some reason it looks a little bit softer in the center there than uh, in the corners, so that's really unusual. Uh, but if we go up to f8 at 70 mil, we've got, wow, really solid sharpness there in the center. And I bet in the corners, yep, corners are solid, really, really sharp indeed. So it looks like I've got a good copy of the lens, thank God, and I'm getting good, nice, sharp images. So up to f13, again, this should be really sharp and looks to me like it's solid, nice and sharp. Yeah, in the corners and the center, so that's really good. f18, we might get a bit of like barrel distortion now and that could lose us some sharpness, but it still looks really nice, so that's good. And f22, we should get some sort of distortion creeping in now, which in theory would make it a little bit softer corner looks a tiny bit softer there than it has been at some of the other apertures but still very usable still really good image so I uh, don't think that's going to cause any any issues for anyone really I mean how often do we really need really sharp corners anyway um, but here we are at a sort of mid focal length so I've got 116 mil uh, might have aimed to get 120 or something but the uh, the markings on the lens are not that clear so I had to kind of guess at it um, but yeah, looks good in the center there, f2.8 again, corner looks very nice, and that corner looks good too, so nice sharp image. Now f4, still looks for some reason a little tiny bit soft in the center compared to the outside. The outside looks much sharper, so it's really strange to see. Uh, I'm not sure why that might be, maybe I've just not locked properly into focus, but f8 looks sharp and again sharp in the corners and center so f8 is just solid and then uh, f13 again solid f18 sharp sharp and then f22 where we'd expect it to soften off a bit it looks well, pretty sharp still maybe a little bit softer but that's no, not too bad at all and now it, it, it's uh, longest focal length 180 We've got nice sharpness there at f2.8 in the centre, that looks solid. And even at the, the extremes in the corner, it looks pretty good too. And that's at f2.8, so that's probably the end where you're going to get the most of sort of bokeh effects if you want to do portraits, so good to know it's sharp there. And now it's the centre at f4 at 1 inch and 80 mil, very sharp. And that corner, very sharp. That corner looks good, maybe a little bit soft, but perfectly usable. And uh, as you can see, slight bit of softness at the extreme corner, but overall nice and sharp as well. And uh, we're going up to f8 in this one. f8 is where we see this lens being really sharp on all the other focal lengths, and it doesn't disappoint here. It looks solid, very sharp indeed. Maybe a tiny bit of softness at the really extreme corners. And f13, very sharp in the center. That 
corner looks pretty good. Maybe at the very extreme corner, it's getting a little bit softer. Probably just due to, due to some kind of like distortion, barrel distortion, or vignetting. Um, but no, it looks really good. Very impressed. That's F18, F22. I don't know if it's worth going through all of these uh, these focal lengths. I'm probably boring you, but uh, yeah, if you are wanting a really critical look at images of the lens, that's what I'm showing these these images for, really. So it all looks really good to me. I'm pretty pleased with that. And now these little test images, I was just checking out the sort of macro capability, so getting really close in and seeing what the bokeh looks like. And as you can see, it doesn't disappoint. Zooming in really close at 180 on these flowers, we've got... Um, very shallow depth of field indeed, so not much of the flower really is in focus. It might be more focused on this, and yeah, it looks a nice image with the, the, the soft blurred out background there. And here we are at 70 mil. I think in these images, I was testing more the um, macro capabilities because with this lens in manual focus, you can actually zoom in really close. I think the, the, the focus in distance is about 25 centimeters, and that 25 centimeters is from the camera sensor. So when you look at the actual lens, the, the lens is probably about 20 centimeters long, so that's just a couple of inches in front of the, the front element of the lens you can zoom from. So it's very good as uh, a macro lens in that regard. So as you can see, it looks very sharp in the center, and then we're getting a lot of uh, a lot of bokeh, a lot of blurriness to the background. And what I like as well about these images, they're really nice and contrasty. It seems to be picking up the colors really nicely. And uh, and yeah, they're just these are all straight out of camera images, no edits done. So they're, they're showing up really nicely. So I think that's really good as well about the lenses. Uh, I did find that when I was using an adapted Sigma that it sometimes didn't render colours that nicely, sometimes just looked a bit dull, not too punchy. Uh, so I always found that a bit annoying. And again, a few more flower pictures, 70 millimetres, very sharp there as you can see. Actually I think these were the ones where I tested the uh, manual focus and kind of using it as a macro lens. So as you can see I got really close into this flower and you can just see all the little dots of, of pollen there. and because it is at f2.8, not much of the flower is in focus. Uh, these ones, obviously I've had a, a bit of movement there, maybe there was a bit of wind or something, or I was just struggling to hold the camera still, but got a bit of shake. Now this is at uh, f22, so trying to get a lot more of it in focus, but it's not going to be the sharpest end of this, uh, this lens really, 70mm f22, so it looks okay though, it's still pretty useful. And here's just some random shots of my son. As you can see, it's locked onto him. Really sharp, really good. And these are the ones on the swing, swinging away, really good. It's locking on nicely to the eye. So again, really good shots. Shot these at a very high shutter speed and uh, had to up the ISO a bit to get the, uh, the images sharpened without too much, uh, too much motion blur. So yeah. As you can see, we've got quite a few shots there. Most of them, apart from that one, are in focus. It looks like on that one, it's just locked onto the the actual climbing frame. And then here's again, just trying out the macro capability of the lens. So this is just a cactus, and you can see so much detail there. So that's just show, showing how good this lens is, how versatile it is. So it's got a really short focal length, and it makes it useful for, like I say, macro. You can do sports with this, you can do portraits, and you can do certain types of landscape photography as well when you want to really crop in and zoom in and take a lot of distractions out of uh, an image. Then it can be great to have a good telephoto lens for, for landscape. So I'm really glad to have added this lens to my collection. It's completing the, the set for me, the Tamron set. As I've got the 17 to 28 on camera right now filming me. I've got my 28 75 and I've got this, this beautiful 70 to 180. And what I really like about this, this 70 to 180 is that usually these 70 to 200 lenses, these telephoto lenses, they're so big and heavy that you often just don't want to bother bringing them out in your backpack if you're going out all day. Whereas this is just lightweight, I can probably just carry this in my backpack all day without any, any issue really. So I think that's going to be my lens collection now, just these three lenses. 
and I'm really pleased with them. I think these will cover me for pretty much any type of photography. Uh, I'm selling actually quite a few of my old lenses off as uh, I was using a couple of Canon lenses adapted onto my E-mount cameras and I'm going to sell my Viltrox 85mm lens uh, which is a really nice portrait lens but I feel that it's quite a heavy lens and it's not one that I want to bring out when I've got these other three lenses in my bag that do everything that I need anyway and the kind of bokeh that you get at 85 f1.8 is similar to going up to like 125mm f2.8 so I think I can get similar looking portraits with this uh, this new lens as well. So if you're in the market for a telephoto lens, the choices you'll have will most likely be this Tamron 70 to 180, or you might look at the Sony 70 to 200 f4, or there's the Sony G Master 70 to 200 f2.8. So the f4 lens comes in at a similar price to this here in the UK. I was comparing the two and um and iron about which one to go for as I liked the idea of having the extra 20mm focal length of the f4 70-200 to and also I liked the idea of the optical steady shot in that 70-200 to but of course these E-mount cameras do have in-body image stabilisation and I've got a gimbal as well so if I wanted to do really stable video footage using this lens which is probably unlikely I don't tend to do much video with a 70-180 to so uh, I, I don't think I'm going to have too much issue with that. And for photography, with the f2.8 aperture, you can typically you know, put your shutter speed up if you need to, and then that can uh, stop you getting any, any motion blur. Uh, so I think really good lens, and I'm really happy to, to own this and add this to the collection. The, uh, the other alternative, like I said, the G Master f2.8, that one was just way above my price range. I think it's about two and a half grand here in the UK, whereas I managed to get this for um, uh, just under 800 quid from, from Tico Buy. So uh, don't tell my wife about that, by the way, but uh, I think it's an absolute bargain. There's Jessup's and the mainstream camera shops here in the UK are selling this lens for 1350. So. At 800 quid, it's, it was a no-brainer to pick it up. I mean, if I wanted to, I could probably sell this used on eBay and make a profit on it. It's, uh, it's an in-demand lens. It's only been out for a few months. A lot of places are out of stock of it, and it is a popular lens as it's just such good value. Uh, the only thing it misses, as I say, is that you don't have optical steady shot, and you do lose 20 millimeters of, uh, of focal length. But 20 millimeters isn't a big deal, especially when you're using an A7R camera where you've got. 40 plus megapixels and you can crop in if you need to to make up for that lost 20 millimeter focal length so it's not going to bother me at all I don't think and it's nice as I say that it's so much lighter and it's just a nice simple lens as well with a lot of these 70 to 200 lenses you have loads of different switches for various different focus modes and distances and whatnot so a nice simple lens it just has that lock switch which stops the lens creeping out if you've just holding it on your camera so that's great and no more switches or buttons to worry about so that's quite cool it's, uh, it just makes it a nice simple easy lens to use and uh, when you've already got all your manual settings to change in your camera who wants to be messing with buttons on their lens as well so I like that about it too and yeah really impressed with it so far I've only had the lens for a week so I'm no doubt gonna be getting out getting loads more photos with it and then I'll uh, most likely post up a further more in-depth review but I hope this has been useful and uh, please drop me a comment let me know your thoughts on the 70 to 180 whether it's a lens you're going to pick up and uh, if you're in the same situation as me where you've got all three of the Tamron lenses then congratulations to you you've got a great set of lenses for shooting any sort of photography so I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video please subscribe join me again soon and I uh, hope you've also enjoyed my slightly adjusted setup here for this video I've added a, a bit of a backlight to make the background a bit more interesting and frame me up nicer and also put the brightness up a bit on uh, on my main lights uh, on my face so uh, yeah hope that's all worked and looking good and hope to see you all again soon bye for now